look right now, uh, as we close the book on September, you feel like we have a collision course between Clemson and Alabama for the third straight year. And that's just the way it kind of looks. Obviously, Oklahoma is involved in the discussion. Oklahoma State lightly removed themselves last week. Uh, we'll see who jumps. You know, Southern Cal plays Washington State tonight. I'm intrigued to stay up real late and watch that game. Um, there are other teams in the mix. Penn State certainly right now looks like the class of the Big Ten. But Alabama and Clemson right now far and away look like the two teams that are heading for a, for round three uh, this year here when we get to the end of the college football playoff. Clemson with a tricky one this Saturday night at Virginia Tech. Always difficult to play in Blacksburg, but I believe the Tigers, uh, even if they lose that game, can obviously still run the table the rest of the way and win the ACC and be in good position to to set up this three-peat. Uh, they look like the two best teams in the country right now. Uh, as you look at the national picture, you kind of gave us a feel. Is there no dark horses out there? Best conference? Uh, anywhere you want to take this in regards to you, you, you shot holes in my SEC claim. I'm, I just think it's the deepest league. I think it's the deepest league. And um, yeah, LSU's disappointing. Uh, Florida, Tennessee aren't that good, especially the Vols reeling after the UMass effort in particular. Uh, yeah, I, I know that the SEC is not looking good, but I just got to think that if you line them up one through 14, that that would be the best league. Maybe. You know, I think that's I think that's the argument of parity. Well, the SEC is so tough, they beat up on each other. I don't think that's the case. I think right now I look at it as the SEC has got a premier team in Alabama, maybe Georgia and Auburn, maybe Georgia and Auburn. Are, are ready to jump into the top 15. Set. But after that, I don't know how many top 25 teams there are. Mississippi State, if you're top 25, nobody cares if you lose on the road to Georgia. You're an underdog, but don't go get beat 31-3. to LSU is a shell of itself. I, I mean, LSU got destroyed 37-7 by the same Mississippi State team that went and got destroyed 31-3. to You know, you look across the league, Florida has no business beating Kentucky. Zero. Tennessee's a shell of itself. South Carolina's trying to fight its way back. Mississippi is, they're done. Texas A&M, we're going to learn about. Maybe Texas A&M does this, this rise and we're completely unaware of it. You know, Arkansas is trying to find itself. They lose. To me, the league is not, there's, there's a, everybody's average. There's three teams. Uh, Alabama is way ahead. Then you got Auburn and Georgia. And then it's average football. And, and that's at best. The Big Ten to me is far and away the best. And look, Michigan uh, you saw what Iowa did against Penn State last week. I think Penn State's the class of the league. Ohio State's still a good football program. There's there's some quality there. Maryland goes on the road and beats Texas. Maryland's now on their third string quarterback. They poor Maryland, poor DJ Durkin. Keep an eye on him. See if he can find another job after the year. But you look across the board there. Wisconsin's a quality program. I, I think big. I think the Big Ten's number one. You know the ACC lost a bunch of matchups early on to the SEC. And it is what it is, but obviously uh, Florida State losing De DeAndre Francois sets them back. It, it showed against NC State. I, I just it, – it, the Pac-12 is what it is. It's just I, – I think it's very jumbled right now. It's very jumbled, and you've got about 10 teams nationally that we can talk about. And after that, there's a lot of parity. Yeah, if you look at the ACC, maybe Miami shows us something – tonight against Duke. They've got a matchup there in the ACC. Duke's a, a solid football team. That's not going to show us everything, but Miami's that next team that could jump up into the fray and challenge in the ACC. Of course, it's going to be difficult for Florida State. NC State already lost to South Carolina, but within the ACC, they've got the games ahead to prove that they've got something there. And of course, Virginia Tech uh, with their one statement in front of them Saturday night against uh, uh, Clemson, but they'll have, of course, their own division to win and the big matchup against Miami. So that second tier to possibly challenge and get a matchup with Clemson the first week of December in the ACC title game yet to be decided there, of course. Uh, I've run the numbers, Will, uh, because we've had most of the non-conference matchups already played. So I've run the numbers and looked at, okay, what is the non-conference record for every league? What's their record against ranked teams? And I don't I don't hold that to such a high standard because any of us can rank anybody that we want. Uh, at this point, there's only some obvious rankings in the top 25 and other teams that you obviously leave out, but there's a whole mess of uh, two and one, three and one kind of teams that you could put in the top 25. So that, that number I, I take with a grain of salt, but also the ranking or the, 
record for each conference against the other four leagues and then try to take that into consideration, of course, if you've got Pitt, who's maybe the 10th best team in the ACC losing to Oklahoma State, maybe the second best team in the Big 12 or the third best team, uh, then, then you obviously take that into consideration. But I've run the numbers top to bottom, and, and for the first time in a long, long time, it's difficult to separate all five of them. Like the Pac-12, I don't think is very good, but they're seven and two against the other four leagues. As you mentioned, the Big Ten has played well, and the and the losses they have are pretty much, for the most part, understandable. Aside from Ohio State losing to Oklahoma, that's the big black mark against the Big Ten right now. But other than that, it's a lot of Purdue losing to Louisville, games like that that you think, okay, well that's understandable. Rutgers losing to Washington, they actually those look good for the Big Ten because they they're lesser teams competing against better teams in better leagues and, and doing extremely well and, and playing within a score in those games. So I certainly hear your argument. Um, man, I just can't imagine it, it. Like you've said, and it's a great point, the coaching in the SEC, that must be what we need to, to look at because the recruiting rankings still tell us the best players are coming to this league. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you know, you look around and I, I'll give you another example. You just talk nationally. UCLA comes back and beats Texas A&M at home. They were down big, but then they go on the road and they lose to Memphis by three. Uh, you know, it, 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 right now, I think they get crushed by Stanford. Yeah, yeah, and Stanford lost to San Diego State. So, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where I think nationally it's very hard to decipher right now. Uh, I, I just think a blanket statement of the SEC is the best conference is, is too much. And, and I don't know. We'll figure out who the best conference is at the end of the season. But right now I'm with you. The coaching, there's a good chance. I, I mean, if South Carolina, and I don't think they will. I picked South Carolina to lose. But if South Carolina blows out Texas A&M, three touchdowns, thing gets out of hand, and Georgia blows out uh, Tennessee, three, four touchdowns, we can see Kevin Sumlin and Butch Jones fired next week. You feel like Barry Odom, after his most recent press conference, you think he's going to get a third year. That doesn't seem anything. And it's kind of spiraling downhill there. We don't know what they're going to do with Mississippi. That's four jobs right there that, you know, I, I don't know. You put the odds on four jobs being open at the end of the season. And then what kind of coaches could the SEC attract from there? Would they want to go get an up-and-comer like Brent? Would Brent Venables at Clemson want to come? Um, would some of these other up-and-coming coaches, Mike Norville at Memphis, would he want to jump in and maybe take the Tennessee job? Chip Kelly – is obviously out there. So, you know, again, it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out for the SEC uh, as we move forward. Texas A&M, Tennessee in particular, those are those are top 15 to 20 jobs in the country. I got to think uh, those guys would be attracted to those, especially Norvell at Memphis. It's not the same conference it used to be. You're not battling. Think about 10 years ago, 2007, Philip Fulmer, Steve Spurrier, Urban Meyer, Mark Rick, Nick Saban, Tommy Tuberville, who's, I mean, think about if Tommy Tuberville was in the league now. All right. Think about Tommy Tuberville being in the league now. But I mean, that's six guys right there. And, you know, I'm probably, I mean, Bobby Johnson, think about a Bobby Johnson at Vanderbilt being in the league now. And, and Bobby might have left. It might have been James Franklin by then. I think it was Bobby Johnson. But even James Franklin, when he was in the league, we, we thought, well, why is, Jeff, why is Penn State grabbing James Franklin from Vanderbilt? He, he's only building on what Bobby Johnson. Think about the coaches that rolled through the league. When they were I, less miles, I left off less miles at LSU. You know, again, you're you're talking about it. That it, it, ten years ago, at this conference, people I saw Paul Feinbaum say that the conference will never get back to what it will be or what it was. It can't. Coaches, I don't see that that type of coaching uh, with those kind of resumes ever being in one conference again. That was wildly impressive. What the SEC had in terms of coaching resumes on its coaching roster in 2007. Yeah, and you mentioned Tuberville. I don't think he gets uh, the credit. Uh, if you go back, look at what he achieved at Ole Miss first in taking a program in shambles, coming off probation, making them competitive, going to and winning bowl games there. Then he goes to Auburn, and he had much better teams than people necessarily look back and think. And he should basically have a de facto ring on his finger from 2004 when he wasn't given the opportunity to play in the national championship game, despite going through the best league in the country. And at that point, oh, four, it was debatable. It was close, but going through one of the best leagues in the country certainly 
winning all the games. He could do everything he possibly could and just couldn't match up, uh, get that uh, undefeated matchup, uh, what uh, Oklahoma, USC for the 04 right. National Championship. And he goes to the Sugar Bowl and completes a 13-0 and campaign. All right, Will Gunter joining us from the all-new early game, uh, 107.5 The Game. We talk South Carolina. We talk the nation. Will, we always appreciate the discussion. Hey, have a great weekend. Enjoy it every time.